Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Big welcome, Seth, who is first in today. Helen, Loretta, Abby, Kenny, Alicia. Hi, peoples. Linda, hello. Kathy, hello. So, how is everybody today? I didn't know it was on Amazon either. I found it this morning. Now, this is a Forest Girl Coloring Book Premium Edition. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Is it Apol? Eapol? Apol? I don't know how to say his name. It's pronounced, it's uh, spelt A E O. <laughs> hang on. Double, hang on. A E double P O L. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful book. This is a second or premium edition. Uh, it's got lots of beautiful images. Hi, Tanya. Welcome. And um, I'm going to do an image out of it today. However, I've printed my image onto some Fabriano Artistico. And you know what? I couldn't find the 200 GSM anywhere on Amazon. Um, I actually purchased mine from the art shop uh, here in Australia. In Bayswater, the art shop Bayswater. Um, but there, there is plenty on Amazon. There was plenty of 300 GSM paper. So if you can't find this one, 300 GSM would be better anyway because it's a lot thicker. So um, don't stress if you can't find the lighter, lighter, um, lighter version of it. Uh, it is just as good in the heavier version. It's just a little bit thicker, which stops it from buckling that little bit more. I think the E is silent, so a pole, a pole, a pole, a pole, <laughs> apple. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Hi Kim, welcome. So um, thanks, Kenny. Hi Heather, welcome, and good morning to you too. Uh, Lisa, sun is shining now. We've had so much rain here over this last night, and uh, our backyard is flooded, and uh, my asthma is really bad. Uh, so had coughing all night not last night the night before until the rain came and last night I settled down a little bit but um it's hay fever related so um it's pretty crappy <laughs> anyway that's the paper I'll be using and the reason I, I could actually do this in the book because the book if you haven't seen it before the paper in the book is really thick and uh easily done with any kind of water-based product so um today I'm going to be doing this little beauty Woods of Gloom, and I've printed it on my paper, ready to go. Hi, Lisa, welcome. <laughs> ready to go. Now, I've popped them up here on the side, and uh, I have got some links for you today with some of the products that I'm going to be using today. So the first link that I did give, give you was the current coloring book, which I got from Cool Craft Books as well. So um, before I ever saw it on Amazon, which I did this morning. <laughs> I'm going to be using a couple of different things today. The first thing I've got, I'm popping it up in the comments box here. Hi, Isabel. Welcome. Hi, Linda. Welcome. Is um, Hi, Pat. Welcome to you too. Um, England, UK, awesome. These are the brushes that I'm going to be using today. To so the first lot, which I've just posted the link for in the comments. Low Cornell Soft Comfort Brushes. This particular set that I got on Amazon was really good priced and uh, it came with a size 10, 6, 4 and 2 brush. Um, one of them's wet and one of them hasn't been used yet. It's brand new. <laughs> um, but they're absolutely beautiful brushes and they've got a contoured handle and they've got this soft feel um, cover over the top, which does split as the brushes get dipped in water. It does sort of crack a little bit over time, so just be wary of that. Um, and it does crack off completely and uh, your brushes can turn... Uh, if I could find my brushes. Okay, who knows? They've just disappeared on me. Here they are. 
Uh, I had one come off completely and there's just wood underneath. So I'm actually going to varnish that at some stage. But they're the ones I'll be using. Also, these brushes are recommended by a lady named Anna Mason. And you can get them from Rosemary & Co. in England. I think it's England. It could be America. Please don't yell at me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to post the link up here. I absolutely love these brushes. She does, Anna Mason has a online school, which I've done a few classes with now. And she recommends these beautiful brushes because of the sizes of them. So there's a triple zero, a zero, a one, a three, and a five. And guess what? They fit in between these ones. So I really like them as a complimentary set as well. So they're by Rosemary and Co. And the brush set's called Anna Mason Brush Set. I really like the five. But uh, these are beautiful for tiny little details. And as I said, they fit in between these ones. So I tend to use them. I've got my cloth. I've got two water jugs up here. I've got my picture. And I think I might need to tape it down. Perhaps. I don't know. I don't think I've got anywhere to tape it down to at the moment. Perhaps some card. This will do. This should stay sturdy. I just don't want it to wrinkle and buckle, so let's just do that. Here is the link for the animation brushes as well. Hello, welcome guys. Nani has got big, hasn't she, Linda? Hi, Jo Beth, welcome. Linda dropped in yesterday quickly and uh, got to see Nani and her massive size now. Hi, Tanya, welcome. Just checking, I've said hello to everybody. Hi, Mary, welcome. How are you? All right. Good, 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 good. What tape do I use? Let's have a look at my tape. Good question. This is called Painter's Tape. Paint Painter, this brand is. I just get it from my local, oh, look at all the fluff on it from my <laughs> from my cotton pads. Um, it's just in the painter section of uh, your local hardware store. So it's less tacky than normal tape. So it peels off things quite easily. If you find that it gets stuck to some papers, I just pull off my sheet of, of tape first. It is very sticky. And um, I actually just pop my hands on it to make it a little less tacky, put a little bit of oils on there, or you can rub it on your clothes a little bit. So just on my pants here, just to make it a little less tacky. If you're finding that you're having trouble with it sticking to some papers too much, but I actually find it not too bad. Anyway, I am just going to try to get it as best I can around the very edge of that. My printer's left a little thin line all the way around. So I'm going to try to get all the way around. This tape was really cheap too. Um, it wasn't expensive tape. It's just cheap painter's masking tape. So Generally it is blue. There's different coloured tapes that painters use and they usually do different things. Usually have different types of tackiness. So uh, you want one with a low tack. You can also use washi tape because washi tape's a paper tape and uh, it tends to peel off most things that it's stuck to. Most things. <laughs> Not all of it. Hi Michelle, welcome. You love my sparkly jacket. This is a wool coat. Well, actually it's not wool. It's probably some sort of polyester. Uh, but I love the sparkles in the sleeves. It's probably hard to see here, but it's got gold sparkles through it. <laughs> but it gets in the way and it's extremely fluffy. It seems to get caught on my watch a bit too. I'm just folding that over. And hoping that uh, this card will be okay. It won't get too damp. We're not going to be putting too much water on it anyway. I'm going to use some ink tense pencils today. All very last minute, these decisions that I make. 
think they're a good idea, but you know, sometimes they don't turn out so well. <laughs> so excuse me if it doesn't. But that's the fun of it. That's why we do it. All right, I'm all taped up. I've got it all taped up all around the edges. So the original image to this is actually quite dark and gloomy, hence the name. Uh, but I think I might just use it as a bit of a guide, but use some brighter colours. Or darker, depending. Depending. I'll pop up a link to the ink test. Ink. Blah. Did I do the low Cornell brushes? Did I pop all those links up? They're all in the description as well. And I'm going to be using Derwent Ink Tents pencils. Hi Shannon, welcome. Come in and welcome. Who else has popped in that I haven't said hello to? Kim I said hi to. Mary I said hi to. Hello. Just flicking through the chat here. Ooh, Arteza watercolours. Nice. I'm actually playing with some shimmering lights watercolours at the moment. I haven't coloured a book out of Imaginary Friends yet by Carolina Kub Kubikowska. Is that how you say it? And um, I thought I'd have a play, but I'm not sure. If it's going all right. Here's a sneaky peeky. She's kind of glittering. Can you see her? Not finished yet, of course. <laughs> but it's on its way. Uh, playing with some museum pencils and some of those uh, Calero paints, watercolour paints. Yeah, I'm feeling very watercolory today. How's that? Who knows? Um, I want to give her some pale pink pajamas. Pajamas. I really like a couple of colors in this set. Uh, let's have a look. Let's do a little bit of carmine pink first. No, nope, that's poppy red. <laughs> Carmine pink and then a little bit of salmon pink, which is in here somewhere. No, nope. maybe it's not called salmon pink. Let me just check. Oh, sorry, scarlet pink. My bad. I'm going to use these for her PJs. Got Carmine pink and scarlet pink. You did, um, Loretta? I don't know. I just felt like doing some um, some watercolour. Well, Inktense isn't really watercolour, is it? It's ink-based. Inktense are pretty cool. The only difference between watercolour pencils and Inktense pencils are watercolours can be reactivated. You can lay down some pencil and you can reactivate it and add colour to the top of it. Um, whereas with ink tents, it, uh, once you activate it with water, it's considered permanent. So ink tents can be used on fabric. So if you've got a calico bag or something with a pattern on it, you can actually use ink tents to color that and the ink tents will be permanent. So you, you I'm pretty sure you need to activate it onto your material first. So it's activated and then you can wash it and, um, it should be permanent. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's what I do, Loretta. Hi, Laura Dahl. I haven't seen you for ages. Hi, Lulu and Kat. Welcome, guys. Come in. Um, but yes, Loretta, I do that too. When I'm just not in the mood, I'm going to start with the carmine pink first. I'm going to add a little bit of colour. Let's just zoom in a bit because it's a tiny little image. Hi. Doesn't want to zoom in. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's really kind of blurry looking. Let me. Oh, there we go. Hello. So 
So just using the carmine pink, I'm just going to come in and mark out these darker areas first. Just going over the creases and the wrinkles in the pyjamas where they're sort of folding over themselves in the collar here, under her hair, all of the shadowy areas. The great thing with ink tents is that uh, you can get plenty of depth with them by using the same colored pencil, uh, using uh, different varying amounts of color, also using extra water in some areas. So there's lots of different things you can do all using one colored pencil. I sort of considered look, I like looking at the colours as only 72 colours, but you could get so many variations of colour using just one pencil, so it kind of makes sense. Does it does? So what's everybody been working on? Laura, I've missed you. I've missed a couple of your streams, but I did see that you posted up or did a live on skin and watercolour. That was kind of cool. Did have a quick look at that one. She's kind of gloomy today. Kind of reminds me of me um, when I lived in the country. I think that's her pants are sort of lifted up there, but we'll just put a little bit there. Um, in the country I used to go off and sit by myself in the bush and just listen to the animals and the birds nice and quietly I used to love living in the country I think if hubby and I had the chance, we'd, we'd move there. Perhaps when we're older and have grandkids, we can take our grandkids to have a farm or something. Perhaps not a farm. Maybe just a property. <laughs> not good with that uh, work. <laughs> not now, anyway. <laughs> Hi Mia, sweetie, I haven't seen you for ages. <laughs> I've done uh, the ink tents directly onto fabric and uh, it's worked quite well and hasn't washed off. Lots of fun. Okay, I've got scarlet pink and I'm going to add little bit really light pressure just around the outside of those areas because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pencil to blend that out over the remaining areas of this pajama set giving us some lighter sections and some darker sections so mixing the two together really so this is the scarlet pink now. It's kind of a orangey pink. Thinking perhaps I might use some of this in the background sky as well. Just bring it all in together. Balance the picture out a little bit. And leave a fair bit of lighter colour here on the outside. Now I wanted to put this colour on before I start with the water because I want them to mix together a little bit. ready pink kind of color going on 
I think that's actually her leg down there. So I'm actually going to erase that out of there. Just clean my eraser. It's got yellow all over it. <laughs> Not everyone's saying hello. I think that's her leg. I think it's a nightgown. I'm not going to have much luck erasing that, am I? It's alright. It'll be quite dark down in there anyway. So, this is leg here. So she's kind of sitting up, and uh, both her legs are coming down here. So behind there is still going to be her nightgown, but just here on her leg, I'm just erasing that. And it doesn't matter that I've put a little bit of pink on there. It's fine. I'm probably going to use some um, earth brown or something anyway, which will have a little bit of a reddy colour. But for now, where are we? Foot dressing gown. Okay, I think I've got it. <laughs> Bye, George. I think he's got it. Fabulous. Absolutely. Anyway. Alright, let's see how that looks. <laughs> Hi, Fitch. Welcome. Oh, me, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm going to use a little brush. I'm going to use a size 2. Just going to move those out of the way. Got my little cloth here and I've got my little shadow hairs here and there. Starting in the darkest part and then moving out over the lighter areas so we can see the depth that we're trying to achieve. Pretty sure that's her hair hanging over there. Some instances I'm still seeing uh, the little gritty pieces of paper underneath, but I'm hoping that will flatten off as I wet. <laughs> we can hope, can't we? Look at that. Here comes the magic cylinder. <laughs> kind of is a little bit of magic, isn't it? Just sort of comes to life. So you can see where I left those whiter areas. Uh, they're a lot lighter and there are little highlights on her. We can go back in with white pencil or something later and we can lighten them up a, a bit more if we want to. Just making sure that I'm trying, like activating all of the color so that I'm not leaving any streaks or lines of the pencil underneath. I want it to be smooth. Oh, thanks, Mia. We had um, our first day of puppy training yesterday. Oh my gosh, that was interesting. <laughs> um, so Nani is uh, 12 weeks today. 
Wow, that's flown. And um, we started puppy school yesterday. There was quite a few in the class. We had a big, huge mix of different um, animals. We had a toy. I think it was just a poodle. It may have been a cross. Toy poodle. We had a couple of Jack Russells. Um, a Malamu. Uh, what else did we have? We had a Rottweiler. Um, a Collie. Um, Nanny. A Staffy. <laughs> there was another dog. I didn't quite catch what it was. It might have been some sort of Shih Tzu. Looked a bit like a mop. <laughs> running around um but one of the dogs barked the whole time and I just had so much trouble hearing the trainer um which was kind of frustrating and uh Nani got she was okay at the start she was friendly and she was being really excited and nice but by the end of it she was extremely tired and uh she was getting a little bit angry at them for trying to talk to her <laughs> um but it was very cute didn't really learn anything but for me i mainly wanted to do it for the uh, interaction the social interaction with the other dogs yeah there's 72 ink tents pencils i missed what what was said there thank you um yeah so she got a little bit frustrated but um i think it was a little bit too long went for an hour and a half in the end uh, but apparently there was more people than there normally is so um i think that might have had something to do with it but she handled it very well really Which was good. But um, the trainer's like, oh, bye next week. I want you to start doing this sit thing. And I'm like, well, Lani already knows how to sit, lay down, speak, come. We're still learning heel. She already's toilet trained now, pretty much. Had a couple of little accidents, but um, nothing huge. Usually she have an accident if she's overexcited um, or she just hasn't made it to the door. <laughs> Most of the time she's been really good. So, so yeah, we're not sure if we're going to take her again. I think I'd like to for a bit more social interaction. Um, but at the same time, it was kind of noisy. <laughs> They've also got, um, bye Lulu. <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was travel sets. Are you meaning the blocks or the, I know there's block, intense blocks as well. I wouldn't mind having and using them as actual ink water base or watercolors like they're actual pans there's a pan set of them I'm probably talking about something completely different but <laughs> oh Kim no problems hope you're feeling better Yeah, I haven't heard of the extra pencils. Oh, whoops, I may have waited a bit too long for that. Let's just grab some colour from the non-activated parts. <laughs> Bye, 
Bye, Kim. Take care. I think the Ink Chance are one of my favourite um, Derwent products. They're just so vibrant. You don't need a lot of colour to get beautiful, strong, rich colour. Now I'm just trying to stay out of the skin area because I stiffed that up. I think I've done pretty well there. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. That's my alarm. Need a drink anyway. Oh, Kenny, that would be wonderful, but you do not have to. Please don't feel you have to. <laughs> um, they, I'm sure they're absolutely lovely. I've seen uh, a couple of uh, reviews on, on the travel sets of them. And they look beautiful. So we've got another colour along coming up too. Peoples. Um, I've agreed to stream an extra stream next weekend I think it is let me just check my calendar is next weekend the 23rd seems familiar <laughs> oh, here look. uh huh it is um, I think I've spoken with Vicky and uh, I was going to do two streams for that. So I've got a couple of pictures I actually want to do. I think I want to do um, um, Chris Lopez has a picture of a witch in her I don't know if it's Halloween. Is it a Halloween version? Or is that in October? What's this one? Oh, this one's a Victorian one. Yeah? <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kenny. Sorry, I could be wrong. I think we're looking at the Victorian one. That's this weekend. But for the uh, Halloween one is in October. My bad. I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the we've got a Victorian uh, colour along this month. And next month is a Halloween one. So, for the Victorian one, I've got an image by Alina Lazareva and also I think I might do one from Hannah Lynn it's very original isn't it <laughs> just making sure I've activated all of the ink there because uh, then I don't have any worries about bleeding and things like that How cute does she look? Let's give her some dark hair. She reminds me of my daughter Faith. What do you reckon, Alicia? She looks like Faith. I don't know why. She just always did every time I saw this book. I've got ink black. Just going to put a little bit in the top of her head. I'm going to put some highlights in here so I don't want to cover over all of it with this. So just going to come into the shadow areas of her hair. She's got some wavy hair. A little bit at the top there. I'm going to 
put a lot of detail in here I don't think just some scratchy lines there's only a couple of areas that's really dark so underneath her ears here should be darker make these valleys higher valleys lower I should say mountains higher <laughs> Anyway, you got to stop me from singing, peoples. <laughs> oh, look at this beautiful long hair. <laughs> Victorian colorathon. Thanks, Joe Beth. Um, <laughs> Actually, I don't have the link for that. I mean, I, Vicky was going to send it to me and I just I haven't got it yet. Um, and then next month is the um, Halloween one. Thank you, lovely peoples. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit of brown in there as well. I'm liking this dark chocolate colour. Just a tiny little bit through here. This is dark chocolate. Just to add a little bit of shadow into the lighter sections without using black. It's going to mix in with the black anyway, but um, I think we can do that. Just on the eyebrows, I'm going to use that chocolate, dark chocolate. I love dark chocolate. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love milk chocolate too. Just doing under the curly bits here. Very good, very, very good. There's a couple of lines in those highlighted spots which I've just gone over really lightly because I don't want to feel too much into the highlights. Now let's colour. Now what are we talking about? Or did, are you talking about the ink tent still? I actually don't know what the other product is. I know that there's pants. Hi Elaine, welcome. I know there's pants and hello Mousy Deb. Did I say hi to you before too? Um... lots of different types starting in these darker areas getting those marked out first oh, I love that that's pretty the colors like um, an Auburn sort of color with the black and the chocolate it's pretty I like it I don't want to go into these lighter areas too much. I want to keep them free, free, for free. What is that movie? Adam Sandler? <laughs> Sandler? Sandler? I don't know. The ink tents. I mean, I've done a couple with ink tents now. I have them out this morning. I did this. Let me just zoom out a bit. I did the Bernard Whitman one with ink tents. That came out beautiful. And um, I did the Witch with ink tents as well. She came out awesome. So they're larger areas, but they look really good in smaller areas too, I agree. Um, hence why I'm using them in the more detailed because I think they're really quite effective and uh, it makes something that's extremely detailed a little bit easier and less daunting to work with. Well, that's what I find. 
especially when you only have like two hours. <laughs> but um, I will be doing a color conversion chart to a couple of other brands of water based pencils. So if you don't have ink tents, you can have a go at a different brand perhaps. I think I'm going to need to go in darker again with that black. Really lightened off, didn't it? I'm just going to zoom back in. She's so very pretty. Oh, thank you, Kenny. Perfect. Well, Rochelle, what are we talking about? The pans? The ink tense pans? Just going around the outside of her PJs there, making sure that's nice and dark. Just leaving some white space in between some of these areas just to add a little bit of highlight. And uh, because <laughs> they, you only need a little bit and it does go a long way, you really don't need to put a lot into these areas. Um, because you don't want to cover up all of it if you can help it. But I understand that it may be hard uh, if you've laid down a little bit too much pencil, but if you have you can always take some off by wiping it onto the brush and then back onto your cloth as well, like you would if you had too much water. Just trying to spread that out. Beautiful. Got a few little highlight areas there, not too many. I think I need a little bit more black though. I think it's looking a bit too dull in some of these areas. I do find that well, on this particular paper that uh, the ink tents go a little bit dull or flat. Um, so you do really need to make sure that you've got depth in the color area because you're not going to get, I don't know, it just doesn't look as rich after it's been ac activated. It can look dull. Okay, what is this bit here? Missed a bit. Too much water. This paper's beautiful too, I love it. And you know what the interesting thing is? The paper is not that great with all watercolours. Um, some watercolours it goes really well with and some not so much. And I think that's because it is the 100% cotton. So it's not the fake sort of watercolour, which I find that all of those... Uh, markers like the Crayola and the Tombow markers and all that work really well on the cheaper, less expensive paper. Sale? What sale? Who's talking about a sale? What did I miss? Hi Kimmy, welcome. Hi Michelle, welcome. The Witch. Oh, sorry, Dal. The Witch is... So this one was Bernard Whitman. This one is from... Uh, uh, oh gosh, what's her name? Anki Lestrange. Uh, I can't remember her her uh, website, her Etsy store. I'll have to have a look. <clears throat> um, is it Spellbinding Images or Spellbound Images or something? The two travel sets you get to complete all the colours. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
And it sucks when you're broken as a sale. Okay, I don't want to add any more water to that yet, so I'm just going to let it dry and do the skin. So I might start with a little bit of baked earth. Uh, just in these baked earth. She's going to be baked. No, not really. Just in those shadow areas. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just assuming that um, the light's above her, so just putting a few shadows in. Creating a little bit of a face. She's actually quite cute, this little girl. Look at that. She's coming together. And uh, then I've got a little bit of red oxide. Red oxide is actually one of my favourites for skin in the ink tents. Just starting in the shadow areas first. I'll have to get that uh, Etsy store for you because I'm not sure what it's called. Oh, okay, Helen, perfect. Because, yeah, I'm not sure. I can't remember um, what her name was. Oh, I just got a notification saying I'm live. That was really slow. Seriously slow. Um, I had so many troubles with it. Uh, it actually, I think it, it was a, uh, a... Quite a while ago, it was a special that was on in, in a group. Uh, we were helping to promote her and her cute little images. I've actually done quite a few of her images over the time, um, especially early on. Um, I was only buying some individual stamps when I first started, and um, she was one of the ones that I really liked. And why can't I find them? Never mind, Helen's got a link for you, Michelle, so she does it before I do. Awesome. You know what's really funny is I was thought, I'll go and have a look in my favourites, but do you know how many favourites I've got? <laughs> Hundreds. So there was a uh, Aurora ring... Aurora Wings was one that I really liked. And um, here we go. The East Wind is the Etsy store. And she is called Lucy Lou Spellbound. That's where Spellbound came from. So Lucy Lou Spellbound and the name of the shop is the East Wind. You can't really see that very well, but there you go. I <laughs> found it. Well, told you where you could find it anyway. All right, how are we going? A little bit more baked earth, uh, sorry, red oxide. I'm going to actually spread this around most of the skin. Hang on, wait, that's chair. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Like, wait, what have I done? No problems. I know, it was a fast notification, wasn't it? <laughs> and uh, the shop owner, I, it's obviously not her real name, but 
uh, is Uncula Strange, and she's actually in my Facebook group too. She's got her own the East Wind stamps or something Facebook group as well. Okay, I just want to spread that color out now. Oh, too much water. Just taking some off. <laughs> Spreading that colour out and around her face. It's good her eyes are closed. <laughs> we can kind of just glaze over those without too much of a hassle. We need some yellow in there now. She's looking rather orange. <laughs> it's okay. Gotta be from the baked earth. Oh, I missed a hand. Just add a little bit of that red oxide in this hand. Now I need a little bit of yellow or something in there. Lighten it up a little bit. What have we got? Uh, okay. We want Sicilian yellow if I can find it. Just going to put a light layer in over the top very gently because I don't want to put any pressure on that paper or rip the paper at all just going over up with that She's nice and brown. Oh, what is that? A bit of fluff. Get off. Yeah, you can sit in the hair. I can't see you there. <laughs> Just using water to highlight some of those areas on the face and a bit of white after we've finished. I think we need a little bit more in there. Darken that up slightly. Now we're definitely going to let that dry and fix that up in a moment. Now that we've uh, let the hair dry a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit more of the ink black. If I can find it. I thought I had it out still. Obviously not. Ink black again. 
So I used uh, a little bit of baked earth, but only a tiny bit, and then red oxide and Sicilian. Is it how you say it? Sicilian yellow. Because my camera doesn't want to work very clearly there. Number 1910 and, excuse me, get the hiccups, <laughs> 0220. Hold my breath a bit. <laughs> A little bit more black in these shadows. This is ink black. Again. Just adding a few more lines and just adding a little bit more depth into some of those shadow areas because they were just faded out that little bit too much of more grey than black. So hopefully this will make it more black. Look at that. Did make it more black. Likey, likey. <laughs> Hi, Kelly, welcome. It was a good skin combo. I actually, uh, one of my patrons oh, ages and ages ago asked me to figure out what would be good with uh, ink tents for skin. So I had to play with a couple of different combos. Just darkening up those areas that uh, I wanted nice and deep. It's much better. Much more, in more intense because, you know, I'm using ink tents. So. <laughs> that was just a bad joke. The great thing about these little tiny images is the details don't have to be really detailed. You can just try and give the illusion that it's more detailed than it is. <laughs> Alright, now I actually am going to see if white will work. Let's pop a little bit of white in some of the, this is antique white, just in some of these lighter areas. I don't know if I need to activate it yet. Possibly not. We may just be able to lay this color down. It looks like I may not need to activate it. I quite like it how it's looking. Just smoothing off some of these areas. Just lightening them off. like that. Don't need to uh, activate it. I think that's just, just giving us enough without activating it. Okay. Just added a few highlights in there. I'm going to do the same on the face. Just on the end of the nose. Just up the middle of the face there. Still a little bit wet, so... I'm 
just lighten those areas slightly. nice what about a little pink cheek there what have we got maybe some carmine pink just a tiny little bit on the cheek just enough to color it give her a little bit of life oh look She's so sweet. Give her some pink lips. <laughs> she's tiny little pink lips. I think she's pretty. She's very pretty. Let's start on the chair. I actually really like that dark chocolate and uh, I think I might go with um what will go with dark chocolate maybe a little bit of madder brown madder because I'm mad uh, no no madder m-a-double-d-e-r one nine two o and one nine three o hmm they're right next to each other on the color chart so the uh, dark chocolate is darker, so we'll start with that in the shadows. Shadow. Nope, she didn't come. Great thing is that they're all really marked out there for you. You just need to go over it. What are we calling this one? Semi grayscale? Detailed line art? Perhaps. And then I've got Maddo Brown. Just doing a light layer. Over the rest of the chair. I mean. Who leaves a tree out in the middle of the woods? She must have dragged it out there. And she's forgotten her dog. That's why she's so sad. Her dog is not with her in this one. <laughs> Alright, just start moving up a bit there. So starting in the darkest areas that we laid down. Wet. My brush is too wet. I can hear the kettle. And then coming out to these lighter areas. Fantastic. Love it. Starting in the darker areas and then going out over the lighter areas. Nice colour. Mahogany wooden chair. the postman and then going over all of those light areas I just wanted to make sure that I activated the dark first so it stayed dark too wet So, 
tiny little bit from Meadow Brain. Brain. <laughs> Meadow Brown. It's really a tongue twister for me today for some reason. I don't know why. Swallow to fly, perhaps I'll die. Alright. Our chair is done. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. No, not simple. Just, I don't know, careful. <laughs> Do you think, I think, I'm just thinking just in my little brain he's going off here saying hmm I think he could do something more with that sure why have I got two carmine pinks out hmm. I have doubles of some of them because uh, I brought a full set off a friend who didn't use them this is the carmine pink again there's a couple of areas just in her top uh, here that I just want to deepen up slightly just under her collar a little bit. And around her pants. Just some of those darker areas that need that little bit more. And I don't even think it needs to be activated. I think we'll just leave it as pencil. Yeah, that's a little better. All right. And um, let's start on the background now. Um, down in here, I'm going to put some of these browns and blacks again. So I'm going to use uh, ink black. For the ground, ink black, matto brown, and chocolate brown, or dark chocolate, I should say. Hi, Heather, welcome. Oh, well, that wasn't really quiet. Welcome, sleep sweetly. <laughs> uh, ink black first in these darkest areas, which are already marked out. Look at that. Let's come down to this section down in here. A little bit down here. Not sure if that's a leaf. I think that's a leaf there, but I want to come between the leaf. the ground there and then we've got dark chocolate just coming around the edges of that just carefully I think it could do with something else there too. Not sure what yet. And uh, a little bit of the Madder Brown. I 
we need a little bit of purple in there. Maybe I'll do this is still the matter brown at the moment. Add a little bit of dusky purple as well. Where are you, dusky purple? There you are. Hi, Nick and Tina. Welcome. Hi, Beth Ann. Welcome. Mm. A lump of chicken. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Michelle. Uh, dusky purple. Just going to come in. And uh, under her feet here a little bit. I kind of want this to stand off from the chair as well. So we're kind of using that purple just to break the colour a little bit. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I know what I mean. And I meant what I said. <laughs> up between these leaves a little bit and then I think we need to add some like green and maybe even some blues as we come up to the sky I want to add maybe a little bit of that pink we used in our pajamas in the sky as well perhaps like a morning sunrise Now this is quite a large area so I'm going to need a larger brush to go in and paint all this out too. Not afraid to leave a couple of white gaps either so if you're coming along and blending it out and you've got a few white spaces it's alright to leave a couple. You don't have to try to blend it all out. Alright, I'm going to use a larger brush this time. Perhaps we'll go up to maybe the five. I'm going to use the animation one. There is a <laughs> there is a lot, but we're going to make it look like we've coloured them over and just sort of I don't know, make it look like we filled in all the details, but no, we haven't. you know, reveal things, there we go, try and keep the chair separate with that dusky purple, I think we've done alright with that, it looks like it's a separate thing there now. Need some water. Get this black area done. If you want it, oh, a bit too much water. Just going to take some of that. Thank you. Spread it around a bit more. 
really try to blend out that ink tents if you can. Don't particularly need all the lines in there. Kind of using circular motions just to go over those areas to make sure they have blended in. Helen. Oh yes, that was terrible. Terrible, terrible. People just are rude. Just zooming out a little bit so you can see a bit more what we're actually starting to see. So here is where I had the black and I definitely feel we need more in there. I don't think we've put enough in there. I might just um, grab my handy dandy board palette, the Caran d'Ache palette, and I'm just going to add a little bit of black on there. Look how stained it is. I've used it so much now. I'm going to grab that ink. Just add a little bit more in there. It wasn't as dark as I was hoping. That's a bit better. Ah, love it. That's better. Just a little bit thicker. There's a couple of areas that was quite dark, so I'm just going to do that now. Down in these corners. So that worked really well, just gave us that little bit more intensity that I was looking for. Nice! It is a really pretty book. Uh, the paper quality, you could do this in the book. I just decided to do it on paper because I don't do anything in the book. Just in case I want to do something different next time. <laughs> Need to keep the options open. Also, if I stuff it up, as you know, that happens sometimes. They don't always work out. that purpley pink color the dusky purple it's pretty it's a pretty color starting to come alive here I think there's a little bit of black in here grab some more of that Nice. Nicking good. Kind of rough down in here. There's not a lot of detail in the original. Let's just uh, get rid of that black again. Lighten it up a little bit. There are some branches in that down here which I can come back in with later and add more detail to. We're just trying to mark around some of these larger leaves.
and get rid of some of that line line I don't know pencil line detail is that what we're looking for <laughs> so yeah cool <laughs> Pretty. Oh, I'm really liking this purple. It's nice. I can hear lots of banging going on out there. Don't know what it is. I will uh, finish up this one. I'm not going to finish it today. I've still got uh, half an hour, but. I will definitely finish it off for patrons. But I'm really liking it so far. Oh, thanks, Michelle. No, you don't need to in this book, um, Elaine. The book lays completely flat in the scanner. Um, well, in my scanner it does, in the A3 one. Um, so every page, it's got a lay flat um, binding. So pretty much every page that you do, you can get a really nice scan from it. Which is good. Um, and because they do have the cutout edge on them, it allows for easy scanning if it doesn't lay quite flat either because you've got that edge that you can trim off. Just trying to blend this around a little bit. It's not quite... I think once we start adding the green into this, this is going to look really nice. Because um, this purple, it's called Dusky Purple, and I think it's because it's got a little bit of pink through it and um, grey. Which means it's going to go really well with green as well, because it's got that pink red element to it. kind of going over all of the stems and things at the moment too because they'll be likely brown it's going to cover over most of that anyway it's cute it's looking good trying to get it to look less like lines and more like just color swirled in there We might need a little bit more of the matter brown on that one. Where are you, Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown is disappeared. There he is. I'm just going to add some to my palette again. There we go. Mr. Brown, Mr. Sorry. <laughs> it's a good song. It's up. Just added that matto brown off the palette into a couple of these areas on the side here. Just mixing them up a bit, making it look like a bit of watercolour. Because, uh, instead of pencil because that's why we're using tents we want it to look kind of watercolor 
I, I use them because I like how vibrant they are and how easy they are to use. Magic. Look at that magic happening all around. Okay, just using the matte brown off my palette just to go into some of these areas and darken them up a little bit. It doesn't have to be the same either, like just using those colours mixed together, you're going to get something really pretty, I think. I'm quite happy with that. What about you guys? Does it look good so far? Okay, now I've got dusky purple coming up here. Let's add in a little bit of more dusky purple. So coming up here now a little bit further with a bit of dusky purple and adding to that a little bit of what have we got I think we need a little bit of blue in there what about that might be a bit too light perhaps some deep indigo Let's have a look. Deep blue. Where is it? It's hiding on the other side. Maybe. Oh, found it. Deep indigo. One, one, zero, zero. Yeah, Lisa, it does. It has coloured images as well. Hang on, I'll zoom out and show. Have you? I think I've done a flip through of it, but I may have done it as a book haul flip through, so I haven't done a really detailed one. But each, see, it's got a painted image in it. So they all have the line art version and the watercolour version of it. I had to choose between three this morning. Um, I was thinking between. Uh, where are we? This one. Or. Might have been two from the front of the book. This one. Or. I really liked this one as well so yeah there's a choice between those ones but <laughs> I picked this one now what was I going for some indigo blue dark deep indigo just really lightly in here actually I'm gonna put it on my palette because I actually don't want it too dark so just stuck it on my palette up there I'm just gonna mix a little bit Still might be too much in with that purple. Good mix. That's a good mix. So I had a little bit of the dusky purple down here. And then 
I'm going to mix that dusky purple with some of that deep indigo. Helen, welcome. Australia here too. My lovely people. We have a few from Australia. Oh no, what did I do? Why is that not? It must have been wet there where I used the pencil and it's not blending in. That's not nice. <laughs> not nice at all. I kind of like the grey in the little scribbly black grey lines here as well. They work really well in here. Adding to the depth and the mysteriousness of it all. Sorry. <laughs> just down here, I still got some of that matter brown. I just want to add some of that in here. Just so pretty. Just mix a little bit of the matter brown and the deep indigo for the sides and these darker patches. And I think I'll go in with a little bit of green at, that's different to the actual green in the leaves. Got a bit of hair stuck under my. Oh dear. Is that cat hair or my hair? Who can I blame for this one? Can't get it off. <laughs> it's stuck. It's very stuck. A bit of that blue under the chair there just bringing it down into this section at the back hello blue we love you blue What do you think? Do you think we need to add a little bit more depth into that chair? I think we're starting to look really pretty actually. What did you tape your image to? This is actually just a piece of card uh, that I got off one of my big mixed media pads. It's got a smooth... Oh gosh, my hair is stuck underneath that. That's just gross. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's just a cardboard. So the other side's actually kind of corrugated. It was on the back of the pad and this was on the inside of the pad. Um, and it's just a hard piece of card. I've also got a wooden board that I like to paint, add things onto, but it's already got my um, acrylic painting on it from the Disney color along, which I still haven't finished. Um, dusky purple first. So I didn't use that, that's why I ended up using the card. No, any, no other reason, no technical reason, just that that's what I had. <laughs> now up here we want to add some more blue. So Still using the blue on my palette and mixing it with so I've done the dusky purple on the paper and then I've put the blue up here on my little palette 
and uh, I've wet my brush and then I'm just grabbing a light layer of that with the water it's probably too much now and then mixing it over the top of that dusky purple so we're getting both colors at the same time see it's kind of a grayed purple blue mix I've just dragged it down into these other areas as well so that you can see it down here. A bit more blue. And just keep going back to the blue to add more water and more blue. I still had some matter brown just to blend in some of these darker areas out into these lighter parts that we're doing now. Make sure there's a bit of a transition between them. Got a really nice big tree branch there, which will come in in a minute too. blue at the top here I am I am still live yeah I just use the back of my pads or you can buy a harder cardboard, I guess, but just a piece of wood, just putting it onto a piece of wood. Um, I've got some flat, like, I actually don't even know what this board is. I probably should ask Cam what it is. <laughs> it's some flat board, um, and that's got my my painting on it. Um, the only thing with that size is that I have trouble turning it around. Um it's such a large board is it MBF is that what it's called peoples do you know For some reason that's popping into my head just going between her hair a little bit with that indigo blue really really lightly now like a wash of it heaps of water and I'm just going to bring up all of these areas in between and I'm not too worried about going over the leaves now because what color are the leaves going to be green and this is blue so it'll come in with green it doesn't really matter just coming around these gaps in those leaves filling it all in water on that palette again just really making that really watery adding more water to it not worried about the leaves just coming over the background there filling everything in because we can go and put detail over the top of it and um, the green will just blend in, so that's not too bad. So it's called Gloomy fo gloomy Woods. Wood, is that what it was called? Um, but we've got fairly dark colour coming down here. I think I want to add some of that colour in her pyjama top. Into this sky to show a morning sky. So 
So let's just keep filling out these areas in between all these leaves. Not using the ink tents directly on the paper. We've gotten rid of that liney, the, the liney kind of look I was trying to get rid of down here. Uh, we're not actually getting it up here, which is kind of cool. So we're using it more like an, a watercolour. I think we've run out. And now we've run out. <laughs> run out I'm gonna add some pink so pink and yellow wouldn't it be bye Linda kisses <laughs> oh, what are your beautiful flowers Elaine now no, I don't think we will add add um, yellow. I think we will add a little bit, tiny little bit of scarlet pink. And I'm going to put it on my little palette. And that indigo blue, where did it go? What was that one called again? I can't find it. I hate that. I'll just put some of these browns away. There it is, up there, hiding. And a little bit of that uh, deep indigo. And I want to make that really pale by adding a whole heap of water to it. And I want to do the same with this one. Really pale. I want to bring this up over our head here. And what do you think? I think we need a bigger brush. Let's go with the 10. So it's a big. It needs to be a little bit more wet than that. Now I'm going to mix them both together. And bring it out over that sky. Kind of turned to purple. I like it. What do you think? It's hard to see in this light, isn't it? It's really light. Let's go over again with another layer. Scarlet pink. Deep indigo. Lots of water. Gonna go a bit darker this time. Much better. really wet I'm just gonna mix what's left of that with that blue that's pretty cool and let's just do that mix I'm gonna put that down into this as well. So I've got a fair bit left. Just darkening those areas up a little bit. Because we've already added blue in there. Um, it's just going to deepen it a little bit more. And it means I'm not wasting any of my ink tents either. Because you know I don't like waste. You use everything for something. I'm running out. Try that up again. So.
have a little bit more of that dusk for purple which I just threw my pencil under my desk pretty cool and I love this uh, board this is amazing I did just have a perspex board and Cameron just sort of scratched it all up for me with uh, a bit of sandpaper but I really do like this board it's uh, a great little addition to the watercolor draw <laughs> a little bit of dusky purple just mixing it all the way up into that blue okay I know it's not quite as gloomy as the name suggests but um I quite like that I think it's going to look pretty with all the green over the top of that a nice dark dark um, floor here I think we need a blue in there what do you guys think I think I need to add some blue deep indigo my brain is going ooh that would look good let's just add a little bit of blue down in here yep it looks good pretty happy with that the reflection of the sky is down here as well more and then we can come back in with our pencils and uh, finish off some more details just getting any areas that I may have missed It does look like winter sort of doesn't it it's like oh well, she's kind of wearing a long nightgown so maybe it is autumn and uh, starting to get cold and the leaves are starting to fall but she's in such a wooded area there's still lots of green in there all right oh, oh, oh. clean off that palette I don't even need that right now oh look I've chopped a bit of water at the top there <laughs> let's add some yellow you know that Sicilian yellow that we used in the skin just gonna add some of that to this drop of water why not Let's not make it a mistake. Let's just make it look like it's meant to be. <laughs> it's meant to be. Let's do some green. Alright, I'm thinking we need something quite dark in here. There's a green in here called Ionian Green, uh, which I might use. It's nice and dark. And um, just get rid of some of these other colours I'm not going to use. Okay. Just going to get rid of some of these colours that I've got out. How long have I got? Oh, 10 minutes. Well, let's make it worth it. See if we can get majority of it done. At least the basics. Beautiful scarlet pink is away. Carmine pink is away. What's this one? Oh, matter brown. You go back up here. I've taken them all out of my tin and I've put them into a folder. It's supposed to make life easier, but do you find that sometimes it's not easier? I do. <laughs> all right. Uh, where is it? Iron, Ionian green. We'll just call it that. Oh, geez, that's really hard to see, isn't it? Bring it up here. Oh, look, you can see it. And now I just have to fix the. <laughs> let's zoom in. Alright, let's do the underside of some of these leaves. 
with this one and these shadow areas. Just gently going and lining out some of these leaves. There's a lot of shadows in these leaves. Oops, sorry. Just on the undersides of these, creating some lines. Bit of green there. I'm going to start to add in some blurry patches in this background to make them look further away. Patches of green through there. would be Nani saying hello. Don't know what she's barking at. Something Cameron's doing. Yep, it's still wet up there. Just put my hand in it. Just scribbles. Just scribbles. There was this Australian ad years ago with a little girl that eats peanut butter and she says about the peanut butter never being oily or dry and it's so easy to spread and she goes all the way to the bottom of the jar and that's what I was just about to say but I thought that's not going to make sense if you've never seen the ad. <laughs> anyway, all the way to the bottom of the picture. So my randomness come out then. They are not always easier, these little cases. They can be a pain in my butt. Perhaps she's sad because all her leaves are starting to change and fall off. Because she's holding a leaf here, or a branch of some sort. Perhaps she's had so much fun playing in these woods and now she's realised that... Uh, they're going to start to die. Just going over all of the areas that have been sort of the scratchy bit just like little details on the trees on the leaves will make them darker than the rest of the leaf so it's going to be more detail the closer we are to them so down the bottom here is going to be more detailed than up the top and further back.
Oh, they're just beautiful. And I like the fact that we can just scribble and uh, make it look like more detail than there is. It's fun. Still wet up the top here, so I'm just being careful of that paper. Because uh, it's going to be more, yeah, I guess, mushy. <laughs> And uh, it's going to uh, indent the paper a lot more. And you won't be able to blend the uh, colour out as much in wet areas. So just keep that in mind. Obviously for the purpose of getting it done here, I'm just going to be really careful. Or use my palette in some of those areas that it is too wet. Oh, thanks, Mia. Pencil is flying. It's scratching up a storm. It's just going. Just going. It's going. Come on. We want to get some of this done and finished. It's looking amazing so far. Wait till we start to add the water on, hey? Okay, now we've done that. So that's quite a dark green and it's mm, kind of an olivey color. It's not very bright, but I still want to add a little bit of bright color in here. So I'm going to use perhaps spring green, which is one of my favorite greens in this set. And uh, also um, fern green and apple green are really nice and bright. But I think I'm going to go with spring green because it's not quite as bright as some of the others. So that's 1550. What's the time? I've got three minutes just to show you one section, I think. So let's do one section so you can see. Obviously, um, I'm going to spend a little bit more time getting into those really deep areas with that Ionian green later but for now let's come down here and do this where it's dry add some of this on the rest of those leaves you could also do it on your palette like I did with the pink and the purple and the blue so let's put this spring green on here go back to my smaller brush maybe the five water on that and then come over the green I've already done so it's up to you how you want to do it you can fill it all in like this concentrate on those darker areas first get them marked out before you go in over the top of the lighter green coming back over the lighter green You choose. I think this way you're going to lose a lot of that colour. Just going to go more green. I think I liked that way better. So let's spring green it up. I also think that we should use a different colour for the trees that we used in the other wooded areas and also in the ground so that they stand out a little bit more. So maybe something um, like a mustard I think would look good in here. I think Nani wants to say goodbye again today so... She sounds like she's playing around out there. I may have to let her in. <laughs> Say hello. Hello my little friends. Coming over those edges. 
I think the important thing to remember about Intense 2 is that you don't have to activate it. If you're coming back in to do some details, you can leave them as pencils, which is kind of awesome. Um, kind of awesome. There you go, I've left a big gap there, which could be background colour. So I'll come back in, fill that out with those background colours later. Let's just fill this section out. No, it isn't that one. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this green. Deep, dark areas first. Going back over the rest of it. Very happy. So do we want to say goodbye to Nani peoples? Tell me, tell me. Tell me people. Oh, Helen, thank you. Yes, please. Yay. <laughs> okay. Let's get her. Oh, thanks, Maria. It's great to see you there. All right. Let me go see if I can grab Nani. If Alicia is still watching, she might be able to grab her for me. I'm not sure if she's still watching. How cool is that looking already? Especially in these blurry areas out here. Looking awesome. Let me just zoom out. There we go. Guys, I'll finish it off for Patreon so you can uh, see it there. We'll also do a colour list for you. And uh, Nani's going to say something. <laughs> Come on. Come say hello. <gasps> what is this? <gasps> what is this? You gonna come up? Yeah. Oh gosh, you're so heavy. We had her weighed yesterday and she weighs 8.3 kilos. <laughs> All right, here. Got Prezi. <gasps> oh, speak. 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 <laughs> Hang on. We'll give her a treat. <laughs> okay. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> oh, chippies, daddy. <laughs> oh, she's so big. Her head only just fits under the camera now. Look at that. She's huge. <laughs> you cannot drink my water. No, no. All right, come on. You're so fat. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Look at that sky looking really pretty I think I could do another layer of that in there once I finish off all the green um, fantastic <laughs> she's adorable and she's a rat bag <laughs> hi Tamara welcome that's okay sweetie we're finishing up now but you can always watch back you can you can And just, uh, yeah, this flower here, this one here that I did at the start, I think I definitely need to go darker in there. Don't forget to uh, bleed out some of those darker areas here as well. Just blend them out into the background a little bit. Then it looks like there's patches of green in the background. That's it, I'm done. I'll finish it off and I'll... See you guys next time Friday. We're finishing off some more of our image 
by Dawn Davidson and also I have a copy of her book so I can show you a copy of her book as well but um thank you so much guys Kenny I'll get in touch with you sweetie as well and I will see you all Friday goodbye peoples thank you